What I find really helps engage students in some of the more technical aspects of architecture and architecture education is when you make the application, when you transfer that knowledge or that lesson to a real life kind of thing. And um, so that you can imagine it and you talk about you know, a building possibly falling down or you try to solve a problem at least conceptually you know, maybe you want to talk about the Leaning Tower of Pisa. One, why is it leaning? Two, why hasn't it fallen down? You know, and we can start to kind of figure out those things and brainstorm about them even to start with. And then we get down to, okay, how can we prove that with the math? Buildings are really clear. And we, we, every one of us, no matter what we choose to do, is going to experience buildings and the built environment. So we can use things that we are looking at right now to talk about math and science. So we talked about a cantilever before. The basic idea of a cantilever is a horizontal surface um, or plane that hangs out there without any vertical at this end. Of course it has to have one at this end or, or else we're using our magical sky hook that is very popular in architecture school. But it doesn't exist in real life. Right? <laughs> so first we know we have to have a vertical. So here we have the vertical. Here we have our horizontal that we want to hang out. So we've got our little point here. We need to bring in a little another point somewhere back here, right? Whether it's a wall or a column that's, that distributes this load, at least all the stuff here, into these columns, takes them down to the ground. But we also need to carry the, what, somebody walks out here, we don't want them, you know, it's fun on a diving board, but not so fun in a building, right? So we don't want that to happen. So we learn through calculations and stuff, and you learn rules of thumb that really help. Like in physics, um, you know, we can go into exhaustive detailed calculations to figure out how far this beam or roof can overhang outside of the building without posts, right? But then we learn over time a rule of thumb that we know that the back span has to be double the cantilever that you know if you design like that, it's pretty much gonna work. You can do that. So let's try that as an exercise in class with stuff we have available. A ruler, a couple of blocks, right, can be our vertical support. Now a critical component of this, you notice nothing changes at my primary point, this point right here near the cantilever. So that part is really all in compression. It's all the weight coming down on this. But this part, in order to keep this from being a seesaw, we not only have to have a support over here, but we have to <laughs> attach it, right? So we can do this with, we have a couple of blocks, we have a, a stick or you know some kind of board to um, span. This is what we call the span, the space between the two vertical supports. To span that dimension, then we also actually have to pin the back end to the, its vertical support. So that's our basic. Then we can take this block here, put weights on top of that board. You know, play with different weights, whatever it is. Maybe you want to know how much it is so that you can turn it into a learning that you can apply it another way. And then you take the blo this block and you move it. And then you start, and you can move the weights too, but if you just equally distribute all the weight on there and you start to move this block back, you'll start to see that that weight, that seesaw is gonna come into action and just pick up the whole vertical support with the board coming right up. But as you keep it here, you can keep loading, even asymmetrically load the cantilever and see how it stays supported. So that's something you can do right in class. And if you know what the weights are of um, your little weights that you're piling up, uh, you can start to turn that into a math problem. <laughs>